Today is a beautiful day for science. Currently, we're looking at the high-resolution SDO imagery from, uh, well, SDO. Viewing this event, this this is quite a beautiful event. This filament uh, broke uh, upon de departing the sun, starting its eruption. It broke the loops that were uh, overlapping it. And you can see as that happens, it not only accelerates the eruption and causes the eruption to become more powerful than it would have been just as a, a filament eruption, it also caused a restructuring of this location. And I'm looking, and I'm, let's, let's take a look at, I didn't do the high-res imagery of this, and I kind of regret it now, because um, I didn't think I would be interested in seeing it, but I am. Let's see if they've updated it. Go away for now, and let's load you, and we're going to look at 1600. I want to see how much surface motion occurred during this event, if they have it yet on here. Because depending on that, we may even see a proton event if that happened, and think about that. Unlikely. Yeah, unlikely. All right, so that was just a thought. And the thought is passed. <laughs> All right, but um, let's go back to that video. I need you to go back here. There's always something happening. So what we have here is a filament that was captured by the loops that were going over. And as that filament uh, erupted, and we started seeing it over two days ago, or about two days ago, the filament was already unstable. It was trying to uh, depart, move, or shift. Or, there was a lot of motion, a lot more motion than you would normally see in a filament that would prolong its stay in its location. And as that occurred, I decided to take a closer look at it and I could see on 171 especially. So if we go to here. Alright, so if we look at 171, you can see, you can see it 131 even too, um, these loops. And this is what actually causes this flare. They're encapsulating this uh, filament. And as that happens, it maintained that filament to stay there for some time to keep from becoming an eruption. But when it finally caused that, that's when we get this. And you can see as that, that restructuring happens, the filament's still erupting at this point. You're still having plasma disperse. Uh, this eruption actually is a very long process. So this, this could be where they're getting those G4 uh, where the data is coming in, showing G4 possibilities. It's, it could be where that data is coming from. And that is the prolonged event of this storm. So when you get a solar storm, imagine like a, a cloud going over your sky. You know, you have a cloud coming over. If the cloud cover is broad and it covers from horizon to horizon, but it doesn't cover very deep, it could be a severe storm, but you're only going to get so much rain before it blows past. That's not a big deal. But if that cloud cover is very narrow and you see it's like, it's okay, so it's, it's a very fine pointed uh, storm, but it's elongating, it's looking deep at that storm, you can see it all the way to the horizon, you're going to get torrential rains, even though it only covered so very short of an area. So that's the difference between you know, like a, a deep or a shallow storm. Well, in this, we're getting both. This is a very wide and a very deep storm. So what we'll end up having is prolonged activity. And that prolonged activity can mean higher levels of geomagnetic storming as that saturation point is both reached and exceeded for the magnetosphere. And we get the arc jets on our uh, magnetosphere where you can look on, let me bring that up. We can look on here and see how Right now, it's rather low. We do have a CME, a very moderate, mild CME, uh, not moderate, just mild, mild CME 
that's impacting us now. It took about four days to arrive, but we're seeing the data that is it is now impacting. It's barely anything. Had it impacted prior, it would have been a little more impacting that we had that the, the density band hitting us at that point yesterday. But as such, it's just another not much. But traveling slow means this one is going to have some elongation as well. So my concern is, how long is the recovery point from this passing minor uh, minuscule storm? <laughs> how much is the recovery point for that going to play into the effect of this upcoming storm that we're having from this? So as you can see, looking right now, we can see a, a peak point. This is the solar storm that's hitting us now from that CME I talked about uh, four days ago. <laughs> I thought it was going to hit us on the 20th. Uh, but, you know, it's a little <laughs> there it is. Well, three and a half days ago. But um, here we go. This, uh, the whole point, I got, sorry, I got distracted. Uh, the whole point of this is you see these, these loops. These are only showing the outer bands. There's actually a ton more inner bands, inner bands, inner bands connecting along as you go down the latitudes of the Earth uh, that each have their own connection. But looking in the outer bands, this saturation point creating these uh, radiation belts to how much saturated solar radiation they're holding, as it builds up, you get a similar situation that happens on the sun of a solar flare. So these magnetic field lines for our magnetosphere, as they elongate from that saturation becoming heavy, they get too close to one another at the narrow point where the drag is. And you can look at that from right here, that model. And as that elongates, it has an arc or a jet, a plasma jet or a plasma arc. And as that happens, it restructures its field line and releases a density, but a portion of the very, very small portion of that plasma gets flung back into the atmosphere of the Earth. And in this case, it then comes in at the point of that restructure where it's going to be our, as you see how we get our geomagnetic storms, north and south poles. And as the saturation increases, that north and south pole and that, that saturation of that, the radiation belts restructuring happening lower and lower suddenly becomes, you know, the, the northern areas of the hemisphere and, and southern areas of the hemisphere, the most northern and most southern. Then suddenly a little closer to the equator, a little closer to the equator, the more severe the storm is, meaning saturation points and the restructuring of that magnetosphere is happening at a lower and lower level. So when you're having a solar storm, we're seeing barely anything of it due to the magnetosphere. However, if you were to be high elevation during that storm, you're getting bombarded by massive, massive amounts of radiation. And that's why a solar storm on Earth, and on the, the surface, isn't that big of a deal. But imagine being in those clouds. That is, <laughs> that is something. So, yeah, we're being hit by that CME right now, the very small one. That's not the, the big one that just happened. This is a small one that happened three and a half days ago. Uh, it's taken its time to get here, and it's just now impacting. Um, but, and you can see also on looking at this data here, which shows us the actual uh, data points in line graph form. And you're going to see this reflection here as the GO-16 and 18 satellites start registering and reading more radiation within that radiation belts, and the density increases in that range as well. But going back along to our current situation, because that's not going to do much of anything. However, it's a slow storm, so once again, the elongation of an effect of storm is what comes into play here. So we're already going to have a slightly active magnetosphere geomagnetic conditions. And then we're also, to put on top of that, this is a very fast moving storm. This eruption here, due to the, the nature of the fact of how all this played out, you have a filament that's already been contesting to get off the the surface of the sun. It may have been a small eruption to begin with, but that long that the longer it took to get off there, the higher that pressure built, the more that energy built, uh, build up. And then you see this eruption occur. Along with that came, because those loops overhanging it, holding it on, a massive amount of energy released through solar flaring. All these loops were severed and, and destroyed by this filament breaking through. And then on top of that, and this is what I find very interesting, 
and goes along with one of the things I've been uh, been sort of studying is the refill the reaction to the loops of an area post a filament eruption and of course typically it's like stitching up the area it's re rebuilding that area the positive and negatives and, and you're creating that magnetic field lines of the which is a kernel loops the the continuation of that energy so it's re re purposing that conduit and as we see it's having trouble maintaining that new conduit and the reason that is is because this uh, event that plasma that was underneath it was also keeping it stable it's uh, imagine having a magnet that's near another magnet or have a piece of metal they're both magnets though have, having a magnet that's attracted to two magnets. The one that's closer, it's going to keep clo uh, keep a connection to. It's going to be more interested in the one that's closer to than the one that's further away. Well, that filament departed, removing a space of plasma that provided some of that conduit, that, that, that injury, uh, energy, to continue. And what you have is a uh, now a void, where now the that coronal loop formation is starting to struggle to keep that formation as it may be stronger and more appealing for that energy to, to flow slightly different now now that that loop or the filament is gone and those loops are building without that filament providing a, a buffer for more balance and stability because it was formed right over that filament that caused all of this so I think we might see some prolonged activity at 31 or 3281 due to this uh, maybe nothing severe but it could lead to what could eventually be surface changing uh, events and if that does happen that's where we get most of our proton events so that's something to keep an eye on it's unlikely as it didn't happen already uh, with the event which is a good sign so it's unlikely but it is still something that is on the table as a possibility so what we see here is this filament erupted broke the connection of all these loops the loops are reforming and as you see they're having struggle they're struggling they're having trouble maintaining that connection as the surface of which it was maintaining stability has completely changed that filament is gone no longer providing a buffer area to maintain stability for those loops I think that about covers it <laughs> very exciting so we look at it from the beginning as it starts. Right there, you see it's already broken free. The loops have all been broken. The filaments erupted. We've got a CME already in projection. There's a continued CME as this leading edge, uh, or the following edge of that filament leading to 3283 uh, is still ongoing on its path. So this is going to be a long duration uh, solar storm. And as that occurs, you can see that intensity of where these loops, uh, beginning and end points were. So we continue. You can see that it's already starting to rebuild and reconnect. But there's a void there. You can see how it's deeper down. It's more of a valley now, as opposed to having that filament fill that gap. And as we continue further, you can see it's, it's more and more intense you get a little more crossing than you normally do in this kind of thing because of that void because that stability is no longer uh, provisioned by that filament so you can see that some of these loops are angling a little more than just you know the straight slinky look that you would normally get so sort of like this right here you look here and you can see little crossing and, and small smaller flares occurring because that stability isn't there so we continue a little more you can see it's flaring more. You got some more stability in the center portion. The upper portion is completely going chaotic. Southern portion sort of bunching up uh, on the, the leading edge. And a little further, and you can see that it's still having continuation issues. And this, in fact, is what I was looking for. This right here shows that some of those connections are finding a completely new route to go. And that's what this is right here. It is no longer finding this is the easiest path because that filament's no longer there so it's looking for another area and this right here can end up causing surface changes 
to the uh, region. And that, that's where you get your more, Im more powerful, more impactful flares and your proton effects. And that, that's what we'll be looking out for right there. And you can see that it's not the only one. Several other loops are doing the same. Less loops are crossing over. More loops are starting to do this sound this way. And there. And then we, we continue the loop. <laughs> the loop of the loops. But that's pretty much uh, what's going on, and that's how it happened and why it happened. And what we're looking for that might happen because it happened. A lot of happening. <laughs> Very exciting. So uh, deep 